Good morning. Sorry I didn't make a video yesterday. I spent most of the day working in my house and... Snow falling off the roof. Anyway, I spent most of the day working on my house and it wasn't a really exciting video, so... I'm probably going to spend a fair bit of the day today working on my house and it won't make a really exciting video, but we'll do a little bit of other stuff. We've got a few different things going on today. Uh, the exciting thing, or I mean, the big thing, I guess, uh, there's a land auction at 11 this morning for a farm right around the corner from us. We are probably not going to buy it. I, in fact, I'm almost definitely not going to buy it. A couple of our landlords might be there that might want to buy it. I don't know. We'll see. We're going to go and see how it goes, and uh, we'll see, but that's going on. Uh, might have to make a Lowe's run. We've got, yeah, stuff to work on in the house today. Our builders are just about done. The electrician came yesterday and finished up everything on his end. And so they, we walked through and did a little punch list where they've got a few things to fix. Uh, and then we've got carpet coming over the weekend and we're moving on Monday is the plan. So that's kind of consuming my time right now. And this project is on hold. But we need to talk about this project. So I am still waiting on hydraulic oil delivery, but when we left off with this one, you guys saw Brock stick a rag down into this coolant reservoir up here and pull oil out. And you can see how black it is um, it is not empty. It's this way this reservoir works. It's not just an open tank. There's baffles and stuff in there, but you can see we're right at the minimum cold mark. It's not, it's not really that low and empty. So uh, I'm not worried that we're losing coolant so much as I am worried that there is oil in there. Um, so John Deere has this motor, this 13.5 liter engine in uh, a lot of different stuff. And in this vintage, the 2000. 12, 13, 14 models, somewhere in there, they had issues with head gaskets, more specifically with the bolts that hold the head to the block. And so a couple of years ago, you'll remember, we had our combine up to the dealer where they pulled the head, put a new head gasket in, flushed the cooling system and put a bunch of new stuff on and fixed all that. The reason we had them do it, there was oil in the cooling. Um, now at that time, Deer had told me that they were okay with us running it until we could get it up there to get it fixed or for whatever reason because oil in the coolant is not a condition to cause you to shut down coolant in the oil is. Whatever. Um, point being, it's a flaw in their product or manufacturing process or something that was causing this. It's not something that just happens to fail every now and then. Uh, and so when we did the combine, they had a PIP or a product improvement program where they would uh, basically cover the cost of that repair as long as you were under 2,500 hours and so many years or whatever. This tractor's sitting at almost 3,200 hours. So I kind of have in the back of my mind, oh crap, this is going to cost us a ton of money. They're going to have to pull the head. It's not going to be covered. Well, when I called up to the John Deere dealer yesterday and talked to him, they said that no, on the tractors, and maybe the combines now too, I don't know, but on this at least, uh, they have changed that to a 5,000 hour within eight years. Well, that's the problem is we're at about eight and three quarters. We got it in May of 2013, so we're just under nine years. So we're waiting to see back what deer's gonna cover on this, um, but we're well under the 5,000 hour mark. So hopefully they'll pitch in and, and take care of the majority, if not all of the cost. The other thing he told me is that it is not as intensive of a repair as what it was for the combine. They don't actually have to pull the head. The problem with this lies in the bolts, and I don't fully understand it, but basically the bolts that hold the head <coughs> to the block, I don't know if oil's getting through them and going up through the bolt passageway and that's how it's getting around it or something or what, but they have a bolt with an O-ring on it built into it, something, I don't know, uh, that's supposed to fix the problem and they can replace those bolts without pulling the actual head. So. Good news on that front, this is not going to be a ten dollars to $20,000 repair like I thought it might be at one point a couple of days ago. So we need to finish changing the hydraulic oil and cleaning it up, doing our service work, and then get it up to the John Deere dealer. Hopefully next week we can get that done. Well, I came down to the house here. We are almost ready to move in. So yesterday I got the rest of our appliances in. We've had the cooktop in, but I got the fridge 
put in there. We got the wall ovens mounted. This is a super, super fancy, really nice unit. The top is our microwave. The bottom is an oven with a divider, so you got top and a bottom. It's, it's super fancy, touch screen, yeah. Dishwasher's in, so that stuff's all good. The electrician came, finished up what he needed to do, all the outlet covers and stuff. He hung our outside ceiling fan. Everything's done from his standpoint, so that's good. So we are waiting on the builder to come back. They had a little bit of a punch list of, oh, like down there, there needs to be a little touch-up paint. They got some paint up there on the ceiling when they were painting the walls. They got a fix. There's a ding in this door, that kind of stuff. There's not a lot, but there's a little bit around to do. So they're going to work on that and then carpet. And that is supposed to be here Saturday and Sunday. They're going to install the carpet. So, yeah, that's fantastic. So we need to start doing a little bit of cleaning, wiping walls down, cleaning up the baseboard. I've got some touch-up paint and things to do in a few different areas and stuff, but uh, that's not super critical. I'm worried about getting closet stuff ready or keep working on that. Uh, toilet paper holders, towel hooks, that kind of stuff, things that we'll need to move in. We did get blinds ordered. Don't have them yet, but we'll put blinds up when we get them. So yesterday and well the day before, I spent a lot of time installing this uh, water filtration system, which is probably way overkill, but it's one of those you just put it in and do it kind of thing. So I think I've gotten everything good now. I just had to resolder one of the joints that... Uh, had a small, small leak. I had to take the fillers off. That's why the floor's all wet and stuff. But uh, oh, that one's been frustrating because sealing those vertical sweat joints on that valve has been quite difficult. But um, I think I've got it now. I got the water softener primed, put salt in it. It's good. So, yeah, everything is uh, coming together here. I need to get an extension for this flush hose to get it down into the uh, sump pump sump there because yeah that hose is under some pressure when you need to get it down in there so it's not spraying all over the place uh, but I can clean up my tools here and we need to work on cleaning the basement up a little bit I think that might be my project for today is to try and clean this I want to mop the floor get all the dirt and stuff off of it from well it's just been there forever but uh, yeah we'll do a little cleaning up here all right, time to go to an auction. We'll go back to the farm. I think Dan and I are gonna go together. Yeah. So I seriously doubt that filming at the auction will be a uh, possibility, but I'll at least give you the results when I leave. With a 35 bushel yield, corn 24.6 acres with a 97 bushel year yield, excuse me. There's approximately Okay, here we go. And how many dollars? What do you want to give out? Somebody give 7,500. Good, 75, get it, I get it with 75, get it with 7,000, I get it with 7,000. That's 7,000 dollars. Hey, I get it with 7,000. I got 4,000. Somebody give 5,000. That's 6,025, I get it with 6,050. That's 6,025 bids, I'm going to put 6,050 dollars out. That's 6,025 bids, I'm going to put 6,050. 75, 6,075, I get a bit 50, yep. 75, I get a bit one, now one, 6,100, I get a bit 6,100, 6,100, I get a bit one, 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 I get a bit 61, one and a quarter, 61 and a quarter, 61 one and a quarter, going twice, does anybody need more time, don't be bashful, 60, 7 and a quarter, third and last call, last call, he's good, Sold a property, sixty-seven dollars an acre. Thank you, sir, for the back letter. Thanks everybody for. Well, that was something there. Uh, sixty-seven hundred an acre, which for most of you probably sounds pretty cheap, but that's expensive, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's real expensive for right here. So that works out over nine thousand a tillable, and uh, it needs a lot of money and tile and stuff. So yeah, that one that was way out of our price range. Post auction Lowe's trip. I need a 2 by 12 we got to build some steps to get from the garage into the house. It's only two steps, so one thing will make all the stringers, but lumber's still expensive. 26 bucks for a 10 foot 2 by 12 Oh, we're back out to the farm. We got a chemical delivery while we were gone. A little bit of prepackaged stuff. Not a lot here, but the Quadris is a fungicide I use on early corn. Some wheat fungicide. Cool. Good deal. 
It's uh, about 50 degrees out, warm and sloppy. Everything's melting. We're supposed to get a bunch of rain overnight tonight and tomorrow, and then get real cold again. But uh, gonna get rid of most of the snow we've got. Phil's out here loading corn in the side draw in our bin, so I'll go out and tell him what that farm sold for. I don't know how he'll react to that. It's super nice when you can load and it doesn't take any electricity. It just blows out of the bin. Back down at the house here. Uh, this is a big floor. This is going to take a little while. I'm doing a little cleaning up here. Shop vacuuming it first and then mopping. I got these two sections done. We'll see how it looks when it dries, but it's got to be better than it was because, well, the water is dirty. We just got this dirt haze on everything. I'd like to get it cleaned up as best we can. Eventually, hopefully, relatively soon, we'll finish this basement. I don't know when it's going to happen. Um, not right now, for sure. But uh, we want to clean it up a little bit in the meantime so the boys can play down here and stuff. Well, I'm not sure what the last thing I filmed was. I think it was this, but that was a while ago. I went and worked on some other stuff for a while because I can only do so much mopping in a day. Uh, we're better. Like, clearly you can tell what I did versus what I haven't done. But it might take a couple passes, it looks like. It's pretty dirty, so the water gets muddy, and then you're just pushing muddy water around. But better. Um, anyway, I did some cleaning up upstairs, and I am uh, I need to get some toilet paper holders and towel hooks and that kind of stuff installed. So i got a few minutes. We're going to grab my drill and do a little bit of that. We'll see how good I did with my blocking this summer. We'll start in our half bath here. Somewhere in this wall, I have a block back there that I put in before the drywall went up. And we should be able to forego the drywall anchors and just screw those right into it for, for this thing. So I need to look up my pictures. We may even get my stud finder out, see if that would help and uh, see if we can find it. Okay, so I do have a picture and so between this stud and this stud, 26 inches off the floor, should be right there. Boom, we've got a block. So somewhere in there we can hit it and uh, we'll, I don't know, we'll sit on it and see, where should we put it? Well, according to the internet, a uh, toilet paper holder should be 26 inches off the floor which is this mark, and eight to 10 to 12 inches in front of the front of the toilet, which is this mark. So we're gonna mount this little doohickey right there, make sure we get it relatively level, screw it to the wall, and then we'll put our thing on and we'll see how we did. All right, well, one done and I already screwed one up. Okay, no, I didn't, I mean, it's fine, it'll be fine. However, this part is not the center of this, so we're a little farther forward than we probably should be. But this toilet's a little tight to that wall anyway, so it's probably not a bad thing. Future notice for other ones. I'll pull it back a little bit. There, something like that. These are pretty simple. They just got a little wedge bracket, your bolt to the wall. It slips on. Nothing locks it, it just hangs there. Maddie, my wife picked those for all of the towel hooks through the whole house, so they'll be simple, easy. Same thing with those. One down. Well, there's another day of me doing very little farm work and being a, a bum, more or less, but that's okay. We got uh, a lot done in the house. Things are coming there. So, um, housekeeping stuff. First of all, I have to go home a little bit early today. It is quarter after five. Today is my son Brayson's birthday. Happy, buddy. Happy birthday, bud. And uh, Grandma and Grandpa are coming over for dinner and cake tonight, so we got to go get cleaned up and ready for that. Um, two, I did get something in the mail today, or UPS, this little doohickey. This is a jump pack for starting dead battery equipment and tractors that I bought this thing, I bought one of these last year, about a year ago at this time. Kind of thought it was a joke and that there's no way it would work. I was surprised it worked really good about four times and then it did, was dead. It wouldn't even start, um, a little car that was dead one time and so... I finally got around to emailing the company because it says right on here, well, at least the old one did, that it had a 24-month warranty. This one doesn't say that, oddly enough. How about that? 
Yeah, so when this one dies, we're done. It's dead. But anyway, they did send me a new one for free. Same thing, just a little updated. It's got a USB-C input charger rather than uh, uh, micro USB, whatever. Anyway, so that's cool. We'll see. I, again, I, I think they're junk, but this company, Ava Pow, should have been my first guess. Indication it was junk, but eh, we'll see. So at least good on them for standing behind it. Uh, two, three, whatever number we're on. Tomorrow, Brock and I are heading to Louisville for the uh, National Farm Machinery Show. So by the time you're watching this, we're well on our way. Uh, we'll be around there Thursday afternoon and Friday morning. We're staying downtown Louisville tomorrow, which means Friday might be rough, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, things, things should be a good time. If you see us there, say hi. We're awkward. It's okay. Just go with it. Um, but anyway... Should be a good time. I'll try and film it. I don't know. I'll probably just make one video for the two days that we're there. However, I really like doing these live streams while I'm driving. I can't do them when I'm driving myself, obviously. But, like when my wife's been with me, she can read questions and I can drive and we can mount the camera and go and do that. And that works well. Well, Brock's going to be with me tomorrow. So we're going to do a live stream on the way down. We may even do one on the way back. So you may get a live stream each of the next two days. So don't feel bad if you missed the first one. Check that out. And if you're watching this and it's Thursday morning, you better check it out because... We're probably, I'm shooting probably like 10 o'clock. Let's shoot for 10 o'clock and we'll go from there. So uh, questions, comments, leave them down below and uh, hit that like and subscribe buttons for me, would you please? Hopefully we're going to run into some other ag YouTubers there. We're going to see if I am part of the club or not. That's what we're going to find out this week. So I know where Brian's going to be and uh, we're going to go find him. And I know Larson's are going to be there and uh, Peterson Farm Bros are there and Welkers are there. And there's going to be lots of them there. So I won't be the only weird one walking around holding the camera, but uh, yeah, it'll be a good time. So see you everybody.